Welcome back, beautiful people. So today I have Mrs. Pippins with us. Hello. And she is going to be sharing the last two years of her life with us. Um, Mrs. Pippins, you walked into my life and you have been a blessing to me before I even knew you were meant to be my blessing. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. I mean, everything that you have been through, I, I, I couldn't imagine. Mrs. Pippen lost her husband March the 21st of 2018. It has been really tough. Tell us, Mrs. Pippins, how did you and your husband meet? Um, we met um, right after I graduated from high school. Really? Yes. We met. I was working at Parkland Hospital, and that's when I met him. And so, I know you guys have three children now. Yeah. Did you guys get married first, or how, how did it? Tell me how the story went of your love. We met, and it was kind of early. We uh, moved together. When I was 18. We moved together. My mom was like, um, she didn't really want me to just move. She was like, you need to get married before you move. So we actually got our first marriage license when I was 18. Wow. But we didn't get married until um, I had my third child, which is in 2004. So you guys have been together since high school. So, so you know each other most of y'all's lives. Yes. You've had three children, y'all gotten married, and now let's fast forward to 2018. Okay. March 21st, that day comes. I want you to really break it down to me how your entire day went. Okay. That entire day, I was um, I was debating if I was gonna go to work on that day mm -hmm. because we had like this thing at work where, where it was an employee appreciation day where they appreciate the employees and we went to the baseball field. and um, it, was, it was nice. The day was kind of going slow. Mm -hmm. I end up, my mom had fell in the backyard like a couple of days before. Really? So when we can leave early. So I was calling my husband. I said, I'm leaving early, but I'm going to go by my mom. Okay. So I kind of waited on her, waited on her, because my mind was saying, Mom, check on your mama, when they should have been saying, check on your husband. So <clears throat> by the time I got home, we, we, kind, we laid around and talked and laughed and you know, he, he was a real jokester. So um, <laughs> that particular day was actually a good day. And my daughter said that was like one of the best days of her life for her dad because they had a good day that day also. So she was at home with them all day? Was, uh, oh, she was at home with him. He picked her up from school. And just a regular day. He sent me a video of somebody we knew. And, you know, we just was laughing. It was like a regular day. And so we went um, later on that evening, um, he, was, he got kind of hungry. And he's the cook of the family. So one of my cousins came over, so he was in the kitchen cooking. He was like, y'all sure y'all don't want any? He was making breakfast for dinner. Really? So he was actually cooking that. bacon. And um, and he was asking, well, do y'all want some? I was like, don't we have some sausage? And he was pulling out sausage. And then um, he asked, we want, want eggs. So he actually sat down and was doing a preparation of getting the eggs together. And he said his head hurt, and then he just passed it. Just from a normal conversation to passing out, calling the ambulance. Right, he was making me breakfast also. So you weren't at mom's, you were home I, I was then. home by then. So yeah. you were actually in the room when this happened? Yes, I was oh in the living room, God. he was in the kitchen. It was like next, right by each other. Oh my God. Yes. So you, you heard him fall. Mm -hmm. When you heard him fall. Well, he's a jokester. So when he fell, he always had these things with the kids where he's shaking, act like something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So it kind of went like that. I'm like, you scaring the kids, you but the kids playing. were in a different room. Uh, but once the chair broke and he fell back, I knew something was wrong. So once he hit the ground, I ran to him. Oh yeah. My God. And my cousin was calling the ambulance. I was calling for the children that was calling the ambulance. It was a, a mess. I mean, at this point, did you think that he was gone? I didn't think he was gone. You, you I just, was... I assumed that I know he has a heart conge uh, congestive heart failure. Okay. So I'm like, he's going to go to the hospital. They're going to put a stem in his heart. He's going to be fine. Was he going to a doctor? Was he, I mean, was there any signs that this was going to happen? It was no signs. He, he took his, he went to the doctor on a regular basis. He had just went to the doctor either that week or the week before. Wow. Um, he uh, was diagnosed with congestive heart failure in 2011. He, he took his medicine every day. 
Wow. He he did everything he was supposed to. So when y'all got to the ER, in the meantime of you getting there, were you trying to wake him up? I mean, was well, I was down on the floor and I was telling him, "Don't leave me. I need him because that's my he's my soulmate." So, and um, in a glimpse of everything, um, my husband was my everything. Yeah. But I had to learn that God is my everything. When you guys were on the way to the hospital, mm -hmm. and he was still asleep. When you got there, how how did they give you the information that he was gone? Well, what happened was um, I let them treat my husband, so I went and throwed on some clothes, and I'm like, okay, he's gonna be fine, and I'm praying the whole time. Uh -huh. So the um, paramedics got him, and uh, they took him mm -hmm. to the uh, ambulance. And so it was, it was still, just him and the paramedics. Mm -hmm. okay. They were still working on him, and they said, hey, y'all meet us at the hospital, which okay. my cousin was with me, but we all frantic, but they knew it was more of an emergency than myself then you, knew. Then you did. And then my cousin is on the phone calling people. So when we get to the hospital, my sister is there. And she just had surgery a couple of days before. And my brother-in-law is there. I'm like, why are y'all here? Because in my mind, everything's going to be okay. Right. You know, he's fine. We don't need y'all. Right. Like, it's not that here? serious. It's not that serious. So my cousin had called everybody. So by the time we get to the hospital, we're looking for him. Where is he? You know? Mm -hmm. And so... The doctor came. The no, somebody came out. Maybe one of them. And they they gathered the family together and they put us in a room. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's never good. Whenever they take you to a room, to me that's like a clue something's going wrong. Okay. And so um, as we sit in the room, I was explaining to them. I was like, maybe do we do you have the right person? Really? You know, my husband he didn't have a shirt on. He had on some pajamas. And um, I was so for real that it wasn't him. To I, they was like, we're gonna make sure that it's him. You, you know, so you were convincing to, them. That, I was oh, convincing no, them yeah, that, that it wasn't him. Wow. So they came back and um, they they told me, yes, it was him. And I just remember falling to my knees, um, crying, screaming and hollering, like, no, this this can't be going on. This it can't be him. You know, maybe I got the wrong person, but by this time they knew that it was him. And see, at home I hadn't gave him his name. They didn't know his name. I don't recall giving him his name, or he, I had the medicine in my hand. So mm. it was, it was just, it, it's like it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, he was supposed to be okay in my mind. And at that moment when they told you that he was gone, how immediately? How did you, the second time they came back and mm -hmm. reassured you that it was him? I dropped to my knees and I screamed and hollered and I cried. You did? Because uh, at that point, that was my husband. I was losing everything. That was my everything. He was my everything. But he knew, he knew, you know, that, that he was my everything. And so um, after seeing him in the room and stuff, I broke down some more. Mm -hmm. uh, so they let you go back. They let us go see him. All the family came. My mom came. His aunts and uncles. Everybody. I don't know who called all those people because I didn't call them. Yes, I wasn't and they were there before you. State of mind. That was there when, when my sister and my uh, brother-in-law arrived. Right when I was arriving, I'm like, who called y'all? Uh, why why y'all here? Right. I'm like, you just had surgery. You need to be at home. Why are you at this hospital? Yeah. I couldn't understand like why everybody. It wasn't crucial to me. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't think you it didn't was, need the family. I didn't think it was gonna be. He's gone. Yeah. And, and it's like they knew so i think more so it was mm -hmm. god that knew yeah because i feel like if they weren't there it yeah. could have been a lot it could have been a lot worse it could have been, been a lot and just to look up and you know the worst thing mm -hmm. your husband being gone yeah but to see the people that love you the most around you there's so many people at the hospital they had they had folks all in the hall that people were saying hey <laughs> yeah i need to get in the room oh, but it wasn't really? any room in the room oh my so God. i knew you know we need to go we need to go because it was just so many people my husband was loved by so many people That's what and you mentioned to me that before he actually passed he kind of knew that he was about to pass to me i don't like people don't think that he knew but stuff he was saying to me make me think he knew like he told me i never i would if before if i had to if if um if i would rather die before you to to live without you and i said oh why would you say that because i can't live without you either right and so just things like that and, and then me uh 
He said, we ra uh, I've raised Jordan. Because he basically raised all my kids. Some of my brother-in-law now would tease him and call him and tell him Happy Mother's Day on Mother's Day. <laughs> and the school, they knew him and they didn't know me. Really? Yes, I go to the school. They'd be like, ma'am, who are you? But he goes to school. Everybody knew him. Wow. So he was he was that parent that was more involved. Usually it's the mom that's right. more involved. And it was, he was It was him. He was the one that was more involved with the children. You know, we went to every football game for my son together and stuff like that. But as far as going into school and getting to know the teachers and stuff, it was him. It wasn't me. Wow. It's tough when you have to let go of somebody who was your rock, your everything. Yes. I, even for the children, because you said he did everything for you guys. He did everything for us. He cooked for us. He drove me around, even though I have a license. He did literally everything for me. But Lift your finger or anything. I didn't really have to do anything. Cooking. You were blessed. Yes. <laughs> it's hard to get a man in the kitchen to cook. Yes, I was blessed. And, and he, um, he wrote me a note um, January 18th, 2017. And it says, I promise I'm going to give you the world. But once people leave, and then you just come to the conclusion, I had the world, and you didn't even know it. I mean, you guys have been together since you were 18 years yeah. old. How old was he when he when he left us? He was 41. 41 years old, guys. Yeah. 41 years old. That's just too young. It's just so young to yeah. leave behind you. We thought we had the whole world ahead of us. Uh, once my daughter, who's 15 now, left the house, and that was our time to travel and sit on a porch and just grow old together yeah and, and it's all gone and so since he's been gone how has it affected your children it has affected them tremendously um to grow up with your dad always there yeah. and and not have him um it's a tragedy really yeah I've ne i i knew the tragedy for them but now I'm experiencing myself. We don't have as many fathers present as we should. Yeah, that's true. But this father was present every day. Every day. And it just feels like to the children, I bet, just unfair. It feels unfair. Do they do they question God on why? Do you think they do you think they have that conversation with themselves? They do. And and that's why that's why I push them back to church because we can't question God. They say everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and it'll all line up to why is this happening to me? I still question God sometimes, but I know in, in questioning him that I'm not supposed to. You're not supposed to question mm -hmm. him? Cause everything mm -hmm. has happened. It's, it, happened, it's for happening for a reason. And all the people he was hanging with and cousins that wanted to pull my husband out the house. Some of them I got brought in obituary as best friends. Mm -hmm. They didn't come to the house after the funeral. They didn't come to the house after the wake. Wow. I had to go to church to remove those people from my life yeah. because those spirits were making it where I couldn't even grieve my husband's death because I'm worried about what they doing and how they're treating my kids and the family. Oh. And I, my advice for anybody, if you lose a family member, and you feel like I can't go around them because I'm gonna be crying, I don't wanna see this. The best thing is, is to show your support with your family mm -hmm. because you may be crying, you may be teary-eyed, but the best thing you can do is be there when they need you. Mm -hmm. and, and you can you being there can just be a blessing. So in other words, don't shun away from somebody who's lost somebody. Don't don't, don't walk around because you may hurt that person's feelings. Yes. They want to talk about that person. They want to mm -hmm. be able to share memories and be able to kind of talk about what took place before he left. Yes. You know, and I've, I've actually had family member who did lose her father this mm -hmm. year. And that was her rocking boy too. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's just tough. Yes. And, and, you actually just lost your father. I just lost my father, yeah. And that's crazy that it happened. You lost your father October 2nd. Yes. That's two months before, the, to the day that I lost my cousin. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. And God has, he bring different people in your life for different reasons also. Um, my co, okay, first I lost my husband, mm -hmm. March 30th, 2018. My coworker was kind of trying to get me to, you know, she couldn't face me. 
she was trying to get me to get better. Keisha, you, you got to come on, you got to yeah. move on. I said, yeah, Peggy, I'm trying, but I'm struggling. Right. So she passed October 2018. She passed away. Yes, and she was the healthiest lady. I was going to the doctor, running around here, doing everything, record Did they Did they say why she passed away? It was just natural. They said it was natural. How did she pass away? In her sleep. She passed away in her sleep? Yes. Well, I mean, I... That is nothing. It's mm -hmm. nothing good to talk about. Mm -mm. But the fact that she passed away in her sleep, that's mm -hmm. that's the way that I would want to go out. And that's what she always said, that, that that's how she wanted to go to. She wanted to go mm -hmm. to sleep. Wow. So that was more, that was October the 13th, mm -hmm. 2018. Then March the 4th, 2018, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Yes. I remember the day you called me with this. Yes. And... I, my heart sunk for you mm -hmm. because at this moment when I got that phone call I wasn't expecting you you know you always sound so cheerful on the phone mm -hmm. as much as what's happened and I was not expecting you to tell me that you found out from the doctors that you were diagnosed with breast cancer well this experience has been different mm -hmm. but like I said God prepares us for everything we go through. Mm -hmm. We may not know it because losing my husband, I was down. Um, it was terrible. That was the worst. That was the worst. So when I found out I had breast cancer, I, I kept going. Um, I was at work when I found out I had just pulled up. Wow. I came in, I assisted the tenants that were waiting on me. And I broke down because after I assisted them, when I was by myself, I, I kind of broke down because I hadn't told nobody. I just had found out myself in the parking lot at work. But even though I broke down, I didn't even leave. I didn't go home that day. You didn't? I stayed at work the entire day. You did? My daughter came. I picked my daughter up from school. She was like, Mom, so what did they say? And I was like, we're going to talk about it later. She said, Mom, it's a yes or no answer. <laughs> and she's just... Um, 14 at the time. So tell me, when you got home, mm -hmm. did you sit your children down? I didn't have a chance to. My daughter was here, and that's when she said it's a yes or no answer. So I just told her yes. And which baby is this one? This is my baby girl, the oh and And she didn't cry. She didn't? She didn't budge. I just talked to her, and I told her we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. So once I went, left from work to go get my other child, and my other child, she she asked, and I told her, and she broke down. You would have thought that I told her she was dying. Oh my God. She broke down, but she just lost her dad. So to think of breast cancer, I'm about to lose my mom too. Brother. I said, baby, it's a fight. We're gonna wrap pink in October. This is not death. This is not. This is not my death. We're not calling it. No, I said this is this is cancer. We're gonna right. we're gonna beat this. We're gonna beat this. And 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 I've been here ever since. Ever since. Ever since fighting. Yes. So and your old your son. I know you've got a baby boy. Mm -hmm. How did he take that information? When I told him, he texted me. He said, "Mama, you a fighter. You got this." Okay. He he, he already know. He's one of my biggest supporters. Wow. So yeah. your children really. Yes. It really took your back on this. Yes, they I did. mean, it really, they, they're pretty much holding you up straight right they now. They are. And my children are the reason why I'm here. They're the reason why I live I was just after losing my husband. husband. If I didn't have children, I don't know what I would have done. And, when, and when I went and got my biopsy to find out if I have cancer, the doctor that was there, um, he was a new doctor in um, doing my biopsy, and they was telling me he wasn't married. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any children. I mm -hmm. said, sir. The reason I'm here today is because of my children. Wow. And I told him, you you may need to get you a family because sometimes you never know. You Everything's never know. arranged already. So you may have just been a blessing to that man's life. Yes, you, just, you never know. I try to, I tell everybody my story, my kids, they say, oh, mama, you're telling everybody. But sometimes you never know it, who you're who helping. Or, or, or how you getting somebody by. Exactly. Because yes. you're, I mean, the strength, the smile that you can still put on your face. Yes. There's no excuses for no one out there who can't get up and do the same. It's not. There's just no excuse. And I, I like, and when I found out I had cancer, I, I haven't treated it like I'm sick. You know, I have my good and bad days. Sometimes I couldn't get out of bed from chemo, mm. but I, but I didn't like cancer 
take over me. And tell me, when you were going through your chemo, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel inside? I mean, chemo was chemo was an attack mm -hmm. in itself. When I when I went to get my first chemo treatment, the lady asked me. She said, um, "You don't have any questions?" I said, "No, ma'am. I'm just here. Mm -hmm. I'm the body. I already gave it to God. So mm -hmm. whatever I'm going through, God got it." And she said, "Well, everybody that's getting chemo, they need to give it to God. If this is how everybody. giving it to God looks, I wasn't concerned in what they was doing, what they was putting in me, because once you give it to God, you have to release it." Yeah. So Mrs. Pippins has been fighting breast cancer. It's March the 4th, 2019. This woman is beautiful. She doesn't, I mean, there is no kind of sunken eyes. She doesn't look tired. <laughs> Her smile is, I mean, it lights up the room. Um, it's lighting up the room for me. Uh, my residents always say, um, you don't look like you have you cancer. Don't. And I say, what do cancer look like? It's, that's a good question. Yeah. What do ask. cancer look like? Because that's a good question that's a good question to me a lot of people tell me you don't look sick or or you don't look like you got cancer i didn't let cancer take over me right and i think sometimes when we're going through stuff we kind of let it take over us and you kind of already kill yourself because you're letting it take over. You're, you're letting your mind think i'm already out of here i'm sick i'm, I'm one step out yes and I've always said, by his stripes, I'm already healed. Um, by his stripes, I'm healed. And that's the truth. And and that's what keeps me. And um, when I lost my husband, I lost my everything. And so cancer, finding that I had cancer was just like putting a Band-Aid on an open wound. Mm -hmm. It didn't affect me. Um, I guess uh, some people think it may, it should have affected me more. Yeah, I, or, well, I was on the phone and I was just like, <laughs> Mrs. Pippins, you're, you're laughing here. I don't understand. You know, I'm over here fixing yeah. to be in tears. I, I it didn't. My mom and my dad, they worried their self about me. And that's really, really um, painful to me knowing that my dad actually passed October the 2nd. But he worried about me. I had to call him after I got out of chemo. I had to make sure I called my mom before I went home and laid down. I made sure I called them. I called some other people too, like my supporters. Yeah. My sister, I would call her. Um, her husband took me to every chemo appointment. Wow. Because him and my husband were best friends and he felt like he, he, had, to he, he really had to do that. Yeah. My husband would take him to the doctor if he had to mm -hmm. um, and sit there with him. I went with my husband taking my brother out to the doctor. So he felt he was obligated to take me. He went to every chemo appointment with wow. me. We sat in the room. We took naps. We ate every chemo. My sister went to the first one me and she wanted to continue to go, but she would have to take off from work. And he said, no, I'm taking her. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> wow. I was fighting over who's going to take me. <laughs> And then I had a lot of co-workers that wanted to go with me. A lot of family members, my auntie, my cousin, they all wanted to take me. But I told them I appreciate it, but I knew my brother-in-law was going to take me. I didn't want people disrupting their life and time right. with their children for me. Look at you. Still yeah. thinking about everybody else. And that's how I am. And it truly taught me to love your people. Mm -hmm. um, reach out to them. Sometimes we, we may have grown up where we don't tell people we love them. And, and we we do. When my husband passed, I didn't have to worry about if he loved me. He showed me. He told me every day. Yeah. And that's how our children are. They're very loving. When they meet people, they want to hug you. Yes. My husband was a hugger. I'm not a hugger. but <laughs> But I hug sometimes. Mm -hmm. But my family is, is nothing but love. And that's because of him. That's because of him. Wow. All that love. Yes. And to know that he left behind three beautiful children for you. Three for you. me. And then we have, we have, he has four more children. Too. Really? Mm -hmm. He has four other children. And so how have the four other children, how have they been taking this loss? We, we spent time together. Mm -hmm. um, I saw one of my other sons, um, I mean, his family, they come over a lot. They have a new baby, mm -hmm. so I keep the baby for them. Uh, when I'm feeling good, mm -hmm. um, I was off work for a while, so I came back to work last week. Really? But before I came back to work, I had my grandbaby for the weekend. 
because I hadn't had time to really see him because I had surgery August of 29th. So you, you just had surgery August, just, August of 29th of this year. So what happened in that surgery? Um, Can you tell us what they did? I had a uh, lip, lip nose removed from under my arm. It was 11 of them. Okay. Two, wow. of, them, two of them were, were still cancerous after the chemo. Okay. So after the chemo, they do surgery and after the surgery, they do radiation. So I'm, I'm just now moving to the radiation piece. Wow. This week. So I, yeah, that's a lot to put on somebody's body. Yeah. So the chemo is set to kill as much as it can. Yes. And then the surgery is to take out whatever's left. What does mm -hmm. the radiation do? And the radiation is like an insurance. It's gonna make sure it cleans whatever cancer oh, cells wow. that's left that they can't see. Wow. Yes. So is the radiation experience almost like the chemo experience, or it's the it, they say it's more like an X-ray. Okay. Um, I haven't. I went yesterday to get it, but really? for some reason God didn't allow me to, it to happen. Wow. So I was there, and I uh, end up leaving. So I have to go back when they call me. I know okay. I go back Friday. They want to do some more uh, MRIs and everything because the doctor want everything to be perfect. Right. Nothing to be there. Yeah. Have you told your story to the doctor? Does he know what has happened in your life? They don't know my whole story. They, they know story. some. They know bits and pieces, but they don't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. I bet that would just be, they would look at you in awe. Yeah. How is she still here and moving like this? Yeah, that's true. Because I look at myself in the eye sometimes. What is the last words you want to leave with us for your children who will one day see this video down the road and they'll think to themselves, that's my mother up there. <laughs> she is giving her testimony. She's mm -hmm. doing it flawlessly. And one day we, we won't all be here. Mm -hmm. We'll be gone. Yeah. What would you? What, what's your final words to your babies? To keep going, keep striving, be better than me and your dad, because he always wanted y'all to be better than him. Even in the video, you know, he always stated, "I want you to be better than I was." Um, I want you to strive, even when it's hard, and and you can't go on, because I've had those days. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, as my mom would say and keep going. And um, your dad always say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. <laughs> That's one of his favorite sayings. Like my kids, he'll be like, are y'all ready? No, we're not ready yet. He said, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> he was a very smart man. He was. He was a very was. smart man. What would you say to anybody out there who has lost a loved one, struggling to find a reason to continue to live the life mm -hmm. that they're living without that person being here. What would you say to them? I would say run to Jesus because that's what I did. I would always go to church. I would go when I wanted to go, but when I lost my husband, it was nowhere else that I needed to go. Like I even told my friend, my sister best friend asked me, what you want to do today? And I actually told her, I said, I want to just go lay at the grave with my husband and it was raining that particular day oh. so i knew that i wasn't in my right mind <laughs> and and instead of her saying no she was like i'll take you and so i knew that i need to run to god i need to go back to what i knew exactly you know sometimes god will take away stuff from you mm -hmm. So you can find him. It, mm. It's gonna lead you back to what you mm. what you did when you was a young girl because every Sunday my auntie would take us to church, and so I knew I needed God and just going to church and just get, getting up, giving my testimony is how I'm getting by, and it just led me to to be better. A better. Person. It led me to be a better person. It made me a better me. Then when I found out I had cancer, that was. Like I said, it was like putting a band-aid on it, mm. on an open wound, because if God can lead me through losing my everything, like job lost everything, you know, I, I never knew what it felt like to lose everything. But when you lose everything, you know, you have to figure out what God is your everything. That he is. He, he is, your, and he's always been there, whether you know it, know it or not. You just knew you was getting by. You know something helped you to get up the next morning and start your day was nothing but God. Yeah. I always tell people, God won't give you more than you can bear. But oh, oh, but then I say, Lord, but why do you think I can burn so much? Yeah. Like, why? 
why did I lose my husband? Then I lose my co-worker, and then I got counselor, and then I lose my father. But you can't, you can't question God. You just have to keep going, and you have to fight and continue to fight. That is so tough to have to name off a list of people that you have lost since 2018. Yes, it is. And to top it off, we have breast cancer. Yes. Mrs. Pippins doesn't want to know what kind of breast cancer she has. And you know what? I respect her for it because she's not claiming it. I'm not claiming it. I know it's stage two. I know I'm gonna make it through it. I'm gonna fight and fight and fight and continue to fight. And that's all that matters. And I gave it to God. Once you give it to God, you don't have to worry about it. He got it. He's got it. Full, full, open hands. He's got it. Yes. yes. You are just too much of a blessing to people. A blessing to me. And I, this is my first time meeting <laughs> Mrs. Pippins in person, guys. Yes. And when I tell you, she. <laughs> You are so beautiful. Thank you. You are so, you don't look like what you've been going through. I don't. I don't look like what I've been going through. Thank God. Thank God. And usually I tell people I had an easy life until I lost my husband, but I still continue to have an easy life. I don't let what I've been through make me look like what I've been through. Because you just keep going. Nothing. You keep going. Yeah. And that's all we can do. That's we all just we can have do. to keep going. Pray and put God first. Pray and put God first. I'm going to go ahead and create Mrs. Pippins a GoFundMe. If you feel it on your heart to share anything you can with her, anything, please do so. Medical bills are expensive. Single parent households. I mean, it, it's tough. Anything you can give, anything you can share with Mrs. Pippins is, is highly grateful. Is there anything else you want to tell the crowd for us, Mrs. Pippins? No, I'd just like to say thank you for hearing my story. And if it touched anyone, I would be, I'm honored because um, Caitlin said, Makisha, I just want you to do a video. And I was like, uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm really like a shy person. Um, I can be shy. But I was like, is the news media going to be there? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, I'll do it. Because I know Caitlin is just bringing me through something I need to do anyway. When I meet strangers in the store, when I meet people just walking by, mm -hmm. I always share my story. I talk to people. And that's how I get by. It's just sharing my story. If it can help anybody, that will be a blessing. Not just for me, but for that person also. Yes. Thank you guys so much for staying tuned. You guys have a wonderful, blessed day, and I hope this has touched many hearts in America. It's definitely touched mine. Oh, thank you, Kaylee.